Okay, going to show you um, removal of a video card, replacement of a video card in a standard PC. You basically just slide the cover off. Of course, undoing any thumb screws or anything like that, holding the cover on. Inside, um, it depends on your system. You may have a built-in graphics card. In that case, you have to add a graphics card to your system. Uh, as you can see, this computer is dusty. It's not my own. It's just one I'm working on um, that needs a graphics card replacement. Um, generally, the graphics card is going to be the first card closest to the uh, top of the system. Um, this would be the power supply. This would actually be the, the top of the system. I've got it turned around because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to get it. You want to remove the one screw here. Of course, you know, make sure all your cables are disconnected from the back um, before you open up the case. Um, remove the one screw here and give the card a tug. It should come up. If it doesn't, look for a little retaining clip. You're not going to be able to make it out too well in this video. There's a little tiny retaining clip, that little white thing you see right there. Um, you usually have to access that on the other side of the graphics card. Um, by either pushing your finger down to release that and some of them actually are this little kind of hook that kind of goes through and you have to push um, on it to release that um, to get the um, little piece that sticks out there over. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, got the card out. Um, as you should be able to see, the slot there is a brownish color. Um, that tells me that this is a AGP slot. Usual AGP slots are brownish in color. Uh, you can verify yours by um, taking a look right along the side here um, by the slot itself. Usually most boards will write on there what the slot is, if it's a PCI or AGP, etc., etc., um, if you have a PCI X uh, 16, something like that, it's going to be a bluish colored port. And here is our troublemaking card. And I want to try and zoom in on here for you because I want to show you what a blown capacitor looks like. Uh, this little guy right here, you see that kind of like brownish color? Uh, right onto the uh, tip of that. There we go. That's better for you. Um, that's a good capacitor. That's a bad one. Um, it just blew a little bit. So this card was kind of working. If I turn it here, kind of see that little bulge on top of it. See, I just got that little bit of a bulge on top of it. Um, that's what happens when a capacitor goes bad. They'll bulge up, they'll pop, and that brown stuff you see there is the actual um, substance inside actually leaking out. Uh, that can happen if the capacitor gets too much of a charge in it. It'll basically just explode, which I'm thinking this one probably did. Or just sometimes over time they go bad, they deteriorate, and they'll do that as well. But usually I find this because... Uh, of an over over voltage. So I'm going to put in here a brand new AGP card uh, that I got over here. And we're going to start this sucker up. Oh, that was a bit uh, interesting. It turns out to be the graphics card I just put in there to replace the other one was bad. Um, <laughs> too bad graphics cards. I've seen it happen, but um, yeah, that's going to be chucked. Um, but yeah, now the system's up and running. I'm deliberately keeping it kind of blurred out like that so you can't see anything on there. Um, but here's the interesting thing for you. Um, the initial complaint by this guy, uh, was that he, his mouse started to work weird and then, um, Basically, the mouse stopped responding. We're talking about one of the old-style PS2 mice. Um, that started to not respond for him. 
So he went out, got a brand new uh, Logitech USB mouse. Uh, very nice mouse, by the way. You know, little USB receiver. And he hooked it up, and his computer just started acting crazy. Um, it's, you know, as he described it, um, his cursor would disappear, the screen um, wasn't responding, things like that. Uh, went out there, checked it out. Basically, his screen was um, switching between resolutions. Um, there was some discoloration in some parts of the screen. Um, if you tried to use the menu on the screen itself, on the actual monitor, pressing the keys, um, it would actually go through and um, black the screen out while you're trying to go through and do that. So there's definitely something going wrong there. Um, so I opened up the case and I you know, found that one bad capacitor like I showed you before. And you know, went ahead and brought it back here, tried a new AGP card. The AGP card I had was bad. So I used another AGP card I had and lo and behold it works. So um, but that's it. It's amazing what one little um, failing component can actually cause with other things, you know, actually cause your mouse to kind of not respond. Um, at least his PS2 mouse was starting to not respond. Now, could it be that the mouse he had was causing some kind of overcharge or short in it that fed back into the system and burnt this out? Possibly. Um, or could it be that the graphics card actually was causing the feedback into the system doing that? Possibly. Um, but it seems to be responding to the mouse whatnot at the moment, so you're getting kind of like a three-for-one deal today. So until next time, I'll see you later.